Good evening everyone and welcome to the video. My name is Saumil Shah. I work as a software engineer. Uh, essentially on April 13th, essentially we have ingested a whopping number of 53 million items into the data lake using simple SQS and Lambda. We essentially, uh, we had at a time we had a peak of 50,000 messages on SQS queue. Our throat, essentially we were ingesting 13.5 million records every hour. That's an amazing number. These these are the numbers that we were able to, you know, ingest that much amount of data every hour. So I want to share some graph and some some of the insights here about the project. Uh, okay, so as you can see here on my screen, I have bl blurred out the details, but what you see here is the number 54 million items, right? So as you can see, we did ingest that amount of data, right? Uh, the second screenshot that you see here, uh, and as you see, a number is 40,000. So on the SQSQ, we had at about roughly around 40, 45, 50,000 messages. Uh, so as you can see, we are talking about a massive scale here, right? So now going back uh, to SQS, as you can see, approximate age of old messages, you know, as you can see, there's a peak, right? Uh, you can clearly see that. Uh, number of messages sent, you know, uh, as you can see, whopping number of messages were being sent, right, to the to the consumer, which was AWS Lambda. Now, sh uh, walking you over the details of the Lambda, again, this is again, mind blowing to me, you know, uh, as you can see, we did set up concurrency, we set up around 570 concurrency, which means every, you know, every, uh, um, you know, if I if I go back on a, on a second interval, and um, uh, maybe not the best idea. Let me go back on a little bit uh, bigger time scale and go to a weekly chart and, and show you here. So as you can see here, right, uh, we were invoking about 500, 550 lambdas uh, essentially every minute. So uh, think about the scale at which we were invoking lambdas, right? So massive number of lambdas were being invoked, as you can see here. Uh, the other thing that I want to show you is um, the invocation. So as you can see, right, uh, around every five, this is on a five minute interval, if I switch to a minute interval, as you can see, like roughly 120, 122, 200 invocations are being made, right? Uh, then I showed you the concurrence users, right? Then uh, this is the duration of the Lambda. So if I scroll back here uh, on this time interval, as you can see, this is the duration of the Lambda, right? So amazing, right? How, uh, how, how did we, how, we were able to do all these things. So just a very simple architecture that I want to share. We have an internal framework designed on AWS Batch that runs jobs. Uh, we can easily schedule them using, uh, it's, we have a dynamic scheduler using AWS Event Bridge that can fire the bad jobs, right? So essentially, you can read more about that. These jobs essentially uh, read the data. These are producers, right? The producers are gonna read data from various sources. They publish messages to the SQSQ. And as I showed you in the screenshot, 50,000, 40,000 messages were roughly there. Now, in order to optimize the SQS also, uh, what we did is instead of publishing single messages, we said, you know what, let's publish. Uh, so we essentially published multiple mes messages in an array. So now, instead of publishing a uh, single message, we are publishing a lot of messages in an array. And what we did is we serialized the, this into a string. So on the Lambda now, as you can see, because of the serialization, I can put more messages on the SQS. So as you know, the SQS size is 256 KB. I mean, the maximum amount of payload can be 256 kilobytes. So we essentially, you know, we wrote a script and we said, okay, you know, how many records can I send to SQS at once? So we were sending all these records to the SQS, as you can see now. Now on the Lambda, what we did guys is we set up a batch size. So the Lambda would, the batch size, I think we, was, we set to five. So we essentially, what we did is, um, you know, five messages will be coming into Lambda. So as you can see, Lambda will get five messages. Then for each messages, we go, uh, you know, process that and dump into the data lake. So we opted this strategy. We were fanning out essentially, you know, uh, we set up a reserved concurrency about 570. Uh, as you can see, right, uh, we were easily able to scale up, right? Um, so then the other things what we did is in order to avoid duplicates on the data lake, right? So what we did is essentially we uploaded single items on the data lake. So single record and the file name is essentially the hash of the of this um, JSON. So essentially we computed an MD5 hash and then that became the file name. That way if a record is duplicated automatically it would be updated on the S3. And essentially after that point, once we have the data from the data lake, uh, that is nothing but our S3 in this case, uh, I'll show you in a second. 
So we started dumping our raw data on the data lake, right? So we have this data lake here. Then essentially what we did is we ran a glue job. Um, so the glue job uh, is responsible to take the data from the data lake single files. So we took care of the dedupes, right? So making sure that there is no, no messages have been duplicated. We could have used the FIFO queue here because FIFO offers dedupe stuff, but we wanted to go for standard queue because of the volume of the messages, right? Remember FIFO queue, uh, the, it is great, but it cannot scale as good as standard cube, but whatever, let me keep going forward. So now what this does is essentially this will, this job essentially a glue job compresses the data and converts into parquet and snappy. Now my data is compressed. Now I can run my Athena queries on this data. So essentially after running a job, uh, you know, my data is compressed with parquet and snappy. And now the users can query this data using Athena, right? Uh, through a stand, standard SQL query, right? And after that, what we did is in order to build dashboard, uh, we essentially leveraged the use of AWS QuickSight. So we built um, um, dashboards on the top of Athena. So we essentially connected Athena, uh, uh, essentially connected QuickSights with Athena, and we built beautiful data visualizations and provided the insight. So this is the entire project, right? As you can see, uh, this architecture we have tested it. We we, we made sure it worked. We were able to ingest 53 million items, sorry, 54 million data points. Uh, we essentially, um, as, as I said, right, we ingested into Athena. We, we did all, all these stuff. Uh, on the cost aspect, we are looking around, we spent roughly around $100. That's nothing, right? To have this amount, this much massive amount of volume of data, uh, I, I would say the, the cost is amazing. That's the beauty about cloud. We also read lot, lot, lot of articles on Lambda, right? How we can optimize Lambda, right? For example, should we use an ARM-based processor, ARM-based architecture or x86? We read about that. We tried to eliminate cold start as well by by adding some provisional concurrency. So we tried, uh, we, we went into complete depth and we, we read everything. Uh, we also read articles about, okay, uh, if you wanted to add layers, right? Should we, does the layer, so does the Lambda functions better uh, with or without layers. So we read a lot of articles. I have also summarized everything there. So, but it was a really fantastic project. I see, I, 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 it seems like uh, what you see from this project is how the cloud can give you the ability to scale up uh, very fast and get the job done. So things that used to, that used to take days and months are now done in few hours. So uh, I think I'm really impressed because having that much amount of data in four hours is really mind blowing. I'm pretty sure we could have done it much more faster uh, as well. But the only reason, um, uh, when we are reading data from other sources, uh, uh, we did not implement threading here. The reason is I didn't want to, you know, bombard uh, the other sources where we are reading the data from. And the reason our internal framework was designed in a way, uh, for example, we implemented uh, a way that if a script stops automatically, uh, it will put the metadata on, on S3 and, and when the script restarts, it automatically resumes from that point onwards. So we took care of all the small details, you know, uh, so all, all these details, right? We created a meta metadata in S3. So uh, we know that when the script stop, where did it stop? Uh, so, so you know, debugging becomes easy. So we took care about all of that. All the fail messages also land into a dead letter queue. So we essentially did a DLQ redraft policy. So we did not even miss a single a single message. So hope this is useful and I, I was able to provide some nice insights to you. Uh, with that being said, thank you so much for wa watching. I have personally tested, as I said, up to 50,000 records we, we had on SQS and it was truly mind blowing to see how we were easily scaling up. We did not have to worry about anything. AWS did all the job for us. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this video. With that being said, if you have any questions, List your question in the comments and I'll be very happy to help you out. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.